Hello friends, I am Anil Agarwal. I teach physics, mainly for computations. Today I am taking a very simple discussion on the application of Fleming's left hand rule for class 10th students. I am talking about chapter number 13, which is magnetic effects of electric current. I am talking about now article number 13.3 which talks about the direction of force experienced by a current carrying conductor. When we have to determine the direction of force experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field, there are three variables involved. Number one, the direction of current is given to us which is flowing inside the conductor. Number two, the direction of magnetic field in which this current carrying conductor is kept is given to us. And number three, we have to determine the direction of force experienced by this current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field. Right? Number one, we are given the direction of current. Number two, we are given the direction of magnetic field. And the unknown is the direction of force. The left hand rule says that carefully check out your left hand. Remember, it should not be your right hand and you should double check it that it is really your left hand. Maybe if required, you start writing with the hand and ascertain whether it's your left hand or right hand. Don't take it lightly, I'm serious, I do mean it because we do the entire process with the right hand and come out with the wrong answer. So, be sure that it's your left hand. Here, we stretch these three fingers at right angles to each other. This is the central finger, one, two, three. This is C, central finger. Central finger is for the direction of current. Now, one, two, three, four. This is four, F-O-R-E, four finger. This is four finger, which is for the direction of field. And this is for the direction of our unknown, the direction of force, right? If this, the central finger is in the direction of current for the conductor and the forefinger is in the direction of field, then this gives you the direction of unknown, the direction of force. I repeat, I repeat, C for C, central finger for current, right? C for C, central finger for current. F for F, forefinger for field. And then this is the unknown force, right? Let us take an example. Example number 13.2 given in the NCRT. It talks about an electron moving downwards in the plane of paper in a horizontal field which is directed towards right in the plane of paper. So we will discuss this question in the plane of paper itself. Uh, example 13.2 in article 13.3 deals with the case of an electron moving horizontally towards the bottom of the paper horizontally towards the bottom of the paper in a field which is directed horizontally towards right in the plane of paper. Now let us first make it clear that current means the direction of conventional positive charges flow. The direction of current is taken as the direction of flow of positive charges. So here if electron is moving horizontally towards the bottom of the paper, the conventional current will flow horizontally towards the right of the paper. Right? So, we maybe we started like this, the this is the direction of electron. But since this is not the direction of current, we fix this as the direction of current. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe we started like this. Maybe we started like this, right? Now this is the right position. See, this is the direction of current, conventional current. And maybe when we initially stretched our fingers, this was the position. Now the important point is that once you have freezed this, you have got to actually lock it here. When you freeze it, you turn your left hand about this freezed direction and turn it in a manner such that the forefinger now comes in the direction of field. Now the thumb 
which is pointing vertically downwards gives you the direction of force experienced by the charge which was moving that is by the electron itself it is not by the positive charge in this question though the electron was moving horizontally down in the plane of paper and to determine its effect the direction of conventional current was decided like this the final answer which we get about the direction of force is for electron only not for the equivalent positive charge right i repeat my steps actually the most important thing here is to freeze one of the fingers the problem is that say if this is the direction of conventional current and uh, initially this was the way our four finger was pointing then once we start trying to bring this in the desired direction we lose track of this finger this definitely aligns in the direction of field horizontally towards right in the plane of paper but in the meantime this finger loses its earlier position that is the problem with in left hand rule and that is the only reason you don't develop confidence in it so my point is you maybe you start with maybe you start with four finger let us do the problem in a different manner let us first fix the direction of four finger in the plane of paper pointing horizontally towards right to indicate the direction of field now we have to bring the central finger in the direction of other variable that is the conventional current let's see we have fixed this direction after fixing the direction of field you don't have to turn this now stretch the fingers and keeping this fixed try to bring the central finger in the direction of conventional current this is the direction of field horizontally in the plane of paper this is the direction of conventional current electron is uh, towards the bottom of the paper so conventional current is towards the top of the paper and the thumb gives the direction of force on the particle which was actually moving that is electron and remember one more thing that do not twist your left hand so much that it effectively behaves as a right hand you will eventually again end up giving wrong answer fine i will sum up the summary is central finger for current conventional current c for cc central finger for conventional current four finger for field and this is for the unknown the direction of force things to remember that once you have fixed freeze one finger say you have freeze the direction of central finger pointing the direction of conventional current then let it be there and turn your hand so that the four finger now comes in the direction of field they, they, they should not move randomly when your focus is here you may lose track of that finger that should not be the case got a point so thank you and all the best and uh, look out for the application of fleming's right hand rule for determining the direction of induced current in my next video thank you